it's been a while since we did one of these excellent unearthed arcanas. We've done plenty of bad ones, and <laughs> <laughs> Loads of bad on us. But ages is a really done. good one. Did you hear the sound? The sound of digging? <gasps> Hang on. Someone's, someone's rescuing us. Are we the Chilean miners? As the, as <laughs> Much like the Chilean miners we are. We're trying to get from the ground. <laughs> and with us, we bring a big sack of, our, of Arcana. You know, I appreciate the wizards do give us the arcana as soon as they dig it up, but I wish they would get some of the dirt off of it. And there's a worm on mine. I don't uh, know about you guys' version of this. Or maybe it's a worm because it's got this undead thing on it. <gasps> and, like, and worms eat zombies and stuff. I yeah, think there's like a... <laughs> yeah, worms, I mean, worms are well known for eating zombies. That is true. <laughs> isn't, isn't there a orc zombie in one of the books that's like covered in worms? Yeah, I think that's the Luthic? No. <laughs> That it's one of those. Anyway, there's a new one, Arcana. It came out a little bit ago. We're slightly later than you know. It's my fault. I didn't realise it until a few days later, and then I got you know I got things to do. Get off my case, man. Um, <laughs> me. <laughs> anyway, it's it's subclasses part four, which is weird because it's for the warlock and the bard, and they already did back in like subclasses part two, a bard, hmm. and in subclasses part one they did a warlock. And then recently they revised that first subplot anyway. But it's, a, it's another lot of these things. I don't know why I heard it, but I think someone said to me that these may have been from the Strahd game. Oh, yeah. Cause they, yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're both spooky. They're a bit sp- they, are, they? they are spooky. This is really, they should have released this at Halloween, really. Well, and, uh, it, it, well, you it know, Sam, it's Halloween somewhere in the world. It's, 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 it's always Halloween, Halloween somewhere. somewhere. That's true. Uh, much like forget. Christmas, yeah. it's, it's banded space. But yeah, the they're both they're both spooky lads. We're gonna look at the warlock today, patron of the undead. Uh, this one I think actually is quite cool. Fills a a neat little gap that wasn't really explicitly covered. I don't think before. the The idea for this warlock is, and I like what they've kind of been doing with the warlock patrons ever since like the the initial book. In the in the initial book, the patrons are kind of. Not they're not very well defined in like what they are like. It's an arch demon or like you know who's that going to be? Probably one of the named ones, an arch fey, eh, and other like they're, they're things that you probably never really interact with. And old one, and yes, that's a thing. And and then they have like the kraken one, and the kraken's like a thing in the book. And obviously you'd probably have a super kraken as your thing. But again, they they move more towards things that you can kind of comprehend within the actual game, as it were. Present as well. Yeah, yeah. And this one is specific, uh, even more so, I'd say this one. This one is, your warlock patron is just a powerful undead thing. Mm. And if you've watched some of our Challenge Raiders videos where we've talked about undead, I think we've mentioned occasionally that the undead, like, category is one of the more interesting and better fleshed out kind of monsters in in 5th, and in D&D in general, I, I think, personally at least. And there's a lot of cool, strong ones. They They give the examples of, like, you know, uh, Strahd specifically, and some other uh, like vampires and liches and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've, as you've probably noticed at this point, I'm going for a mummy. Nice, nice. And uh, Lord Soth, the Death Knight. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Ex- exactly. Yeah. So I, I think uh, that's cool. So at first level, you get an expanded spell list. Now that lets you choose from an expanded list of spells. When you choose, when you learn a warlock spell, the following spells added to your warlock spell list for you. And they're hmm. level specific. So at first level you get bane and force uh, force life. When you un- when you unlock second level spell slots, you'll get blindness, deafness, and phantasmal force. Then speak with dead, uh, phantom steed, deaf word, great invisibility, anti life shell, and cloud kill. All the ones with death or kill or you know dead in in the name. Everything you'd find in like an edgy thirteen year olds. A, a good couple of spells. Again, I'm not. I've never played a warlock, but I have helped my mother make one. Uh, so I'm. I am sort of familiar with the Warlock spell list. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess these are some, like, classic necromancy ones, a lot of them, aren't they? Phantom Steed is a bit weird. I, I guess it's so if you have, like, a Death Knight guy, guy you, you could, you you could have... That's true. Horseman of the Apocalypse. Thing. Yeah. It would be cool if, if if they did have the... Because there's, like, the Summon Greater Steed from, um, I think it's Xanathar's. If you could get them that, and they could have, like, a sort of a, a miniature nightmare, as in the, the fiery yeah. death horse. That could be fun. Yeah, some some interesting spells. Nothing too world changing, I don't think. Though, yeah, uh, they're pretty cool. Like, should, should I, uh, Neil, should I talk about form of, of dread, or would you? I can do form of dread. Dread us up. Okay, you manifest an aspect of your patron's dreadful presence. Mm. You gain temporary hit points, 
A D10 plus your warlock level. That's good. Okay. Once during each of your turns, when you hit a creature or attack, you can force it to make a wisdom saving throw, or it's mm. frightened until the end of your next turn. Which is good. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. You cannot be frightened. Well, okay. And this is all first level, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is a transformation, yeah. Ah, of course, yeah. And you can perform the transformation. Sometimes it will do a proficiency bonus, so that's good, not modifier. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although it's kind of a low level... It being proficiency bonus does feel like I get very few, and I get more later on. So if you min-max your character with the ones which is always based on modify, it feels like, man, i got like four at level one, and that feels, yeah, that yeah. feels pretty good. Uh, and most intriguingly, it talks about how the form should reflect your patron or yeah, an aspect yeah. of it, which is cool. And we love that description in the Genie Warlock, so it's cool to see that again. They talk about how you you may have shadows forming a crown and robes if you have a lich, mm-hmm. or bat-like features if you are a vampire patron, which is yeah. very cool. And again, my guy is wrapped up in mummy stuff, because he's got a mummy, I guess a mummy lord patron. That's awesome, a mummy lord patron, I love it. Mm. Again, it was one of those, like, it, when, when they were listening, there was like, oh... What? Because there's so many great high level undead. I was thinking like a death tyrant. You know, the beholder would be oh. a very a cool patron. Mm-hmm. Even just like a be- a beholder patron anyway, it could be pretty neat. But a uh, undead hey, tyrant. And then I thought Draco Lich as well. Mm. Oh, that the, could uh, be mental. A very yeah. cool one. Because then you could because you could even like multi class uh, like dragon sorcerer if you really wanted to like go crazy with that. The thing about warlocks is they're very. I've never, again never played one, but they. I, I am told that they're very. You know, it's very customizable because you have all the the invocations and stuff. And I think that's just another level of like, you know, customization. Especially if you're an arty person or like all just like you know getting stuff commissioned mm-hmm. of your of your character, then it's a good opportunity to you know have some creativity. Although it's again it's um I know I'll I'll talk about it at the end because it's 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 a point about the class in general. Um, but yeah, any, anyhow. But yeah, I think of all the transformations that I've seen in subclasses, this one is... I'm okay with this one more than, like, the monk who summons the, the JoJo stand. And the, it's arms, and like, isn't it? It's yeah, like, it's like big magic arms. It's like a, it's like a Ashura's Wrath. And then, like... And, the, and there was the original version of the Wizard Mystic, uh, the Wizard Psionic class, where they had, like, a transformation in that, that second level, and it was also kind of like, eh. A lot of the other ones are at level, yeah. like, 14, though, like Cog Boy. That's the other thing, yeah. It, it's We've talked about it before with, like, it's good to have the thing, their signature thing early, uh, because then you get to actually use it. Reminds so. me of Phoenix Sorcerer, mm-hmm. where you get that ability very early, that, like, Ignite ability. Oh, sure, yeah. I, I guess, like, the, the thing is, again, with it, with it, all these things, as you level up, you can describe it getting more and more over the top, uh, mm. visually. Anyway, so at 6th level, Grave Touched, you, you are, you're becoming more undead, and you stop requiring to eat, drink, or breathe. Now, breathe is a, a good one, because, man, going underwater is a pain uh, when mm. you've got to make sure everyone can breathe. That's basically what it's for. And someone might try and choke you, and then you have to look up what you're... You know, I can only hold my breath for my con play... But no, you don't need to breathe. Don't worry about it. No, no, no rugger smothering is going to do that to you. <laughs> no, no one's going to no one's going to choke you out. I saw the word creature in the sentence twice without even a comma between it, and I got like, Ugh. Uh, anyway. But yeah, when when you hit something with an attack roll, uh, you can make the damage necrotic damage, which is like that when we talk talking about the uh, the artificer, not artificer, the uh, uh, what do you call it, um, archivist wizard who can uh, change the damage yeah. types. So mm-hmm. this is like yeah, you can change whatever is to necrotic damage. When you're using your uh, oh, hang on there, and then I guess additionally, yes, to this, yes, when when you're in your form, you can do more your damage. transformation. Not only do you transform into necrotic, it does an additional damage die of necrotic damage. So that's very cool. One additional damage, okay? Because I'm just trying to figure out. Because for instance, if you had a great sword, it <laughs> sure, would be three d six, not four d six. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Well, the, the, which is of course the the reason why half orc with battle axe is better than half orc with great sword because they only get one additional die on their savage crit thing. But yeah, so this is cool. I guess it does really sync up well with Eldritch Blast if you have like the the invocations that make that. Is, is, it, is it an invocation that makes it a D ten or is it just always a D ten? Always a D ten. What's interesting about Eldritch Blast is that it's mm. a cantrip that doesn't increase its damage die. Yeah, it yeah. increases the number of times you get to attack with it. Oh, that, that's right. Kind of like a scorching ray kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. 
when you're in your super mode with Grave Touched, you know, and you're in your undead form, it will be two attacks dealing 2d10 necrotic damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't say once per turn, it says while you are using the form. And then also those attacks will be fearing. Yeah, yeah, so you become a sort of like a... (laughs) That's that's like a monster monster stat block. Kind yeah, of. like a, yeah, like a, you know, a lot, uh, that, that's very cool. Uh, I, I like that a lot. And I guess you could, uh, if you're really trying to min max stuff, which a lot of people who play Warlock sometimes do, because it's you know you can choose the perfect invocations anyway. But you could you know choose spells that you know have fewer damage die, but then do have you know a D10 or a D12. I think Witch Bolt is a is a is a warlock spell that you can get that has d12s i, I believe i believe it is a d12 but most Although by people... six, six, yeah sixth level you're probably not going to be using witch bolt very much but maybe. you can upcast it but it doesn't scale very well it doesn't fine. scale very well no yeah i think you can do like vampiric touch and stuff which might be interesting because then That's it's true, yeah. more damage yeah. die on the healing you're getting which could mm. be Ooh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this having like the minor thing of you don't need to eat, uh, drink, or breathe, that, that's fun for roleplay stuff and maybe will be useful at some point. Pro- pro- probably not like in combat, necessarily. I quite like, um, well, breathe is interesting because then how do like, you know, aerosol poisons and things work like that? You know? That is true, yeah, yeah. Definitely you could uh, argue things like, you know, like poison clouds, like can I just hold my breath and like... Have mm. a, at least have like advantage on the save or whatever. If it's like a retching one, um, definitely yeah. And yeah, I I have my Sunday game where all my players are undead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's quite interesting that they don't give you the drink or breathe thing straight away. They give it to you later on, which is the same thing I did for them as well. Ah, right. So right. the progression of like being more undead is 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 kind of cool thematic suddenly to for your character to realize they don't need to eat. Yeah, yeah. Or they're not breathing. I think for Warlock it makes a lot of sense because because uh, you're becoming more connected as you level up to your patron. So the idea of becoming more undead makes sense. Perhaps make, makes even more sense than it does for other classes. Yeah, I should tell you about Mortal Husk. Uh, your, con- your, your, your connection to uh, <laughs> undeath and necrotic energy now saturates your body, so you have resistance Lovely. to necrotic damage. Uh, if you are using your form of dread, you instead become immune to necrotic damage. So when you enter your form, it's getting another buff. Right. Okay, okay. You can't take any necrotic damage. Uh, in addition, when you reduce your hit points, you can cause your body to explode. Oh, yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember reading this. Each creature within 30 feet of you takes necrotic damage equal to 2d10 plus your warlock level. You then revive <laughs> one hit point in your previous space along with your gear, and you gain one level of exhaustion. Once mm. you revive this way, you can't do so again until you finish 1d4 long rests, which was in a couple of other yeah, later level it abilities for it, the 1d4 days rather than getting yeah, it on the recharge. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't remember what mm. it was, but there was something else that had that. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I like this one. I think, this one's I think very it's, funny to me. I find it, I think it's great. <laughs> I think if you describe it as, like, your patron, like, physically, like manifesting in that moment it could be very cool it forces cool. you to rise as it were you like, know you, like you, you, Strahd or Lord Soth shop and is like stand your, up your, yeah. your service isn't finished kind of yeah, thing we're not done with you yeah. yeah I like that and, and resistance to necrotic again I think at 10th level that's comparable to when the necromancy wizard gets that it's exactly when they get it it's exactly the same nice and immunity to it when you use a thing. I mean, there's some pretty nasty necrotic damage dealers out there. Yeah. Again, as we say, like a lot of the good high level monsters are undead, and a lot of them have necrotic attacks. You know, like a Death Knight on their like Hellfire orb, half of that is is necrotic. And if you're playing like a Tiefling or something, you can resist both of those. So. It's very powerful against a lot of monsters because again, mm-hmm. I gave this ability to all my players in my Sunday game. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was like some enemies, which purposefully, like, they went mm. to kill a necromancer, and sure, lots yeah. of the things he could do and his minions could do, they were completely immune to. Sure, the only exactly. reason they could survive that was because of that this kind of ability. So it was yeah. going to come in really handy, particularly if you do a storyline maybe about having to take down your patron. You, you touch on the thing I was, I was going to mention earlier. I think I will mention it now. Is that, like... Of all the other warlock patrons, I think this is the one which is most explicitly like, well, go kill your patron. I'm gonna end up fighting this guy, yeah. aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> like, if, if I was playing this character, I wouldn't be thinking because I obviously you could play like an evil campaign with evil, everyone, you know, the evil, evil characters, and that's not, you know, I'm not. That's fine, and that can be very cool. But if you're not in a like explicitly evil group, 
if I was playing this character, I would be thinking, okay, when am I going to fight? When am I going to kill my patron and have to either change class or, like, become my own patron or whatever? Like, wh- when is that happening? Like, I think even, uh, if, even if you were evil, you'd want to kill them to be more powerful. Like, well, like, that, that's the other thing, yeah. Supplant exactly. them. Like, yeah. Like, again, when your patron is something that is way more terrestrial... It's on the cards. Like, the, there's no stats for, you know, like, um, uh, the great old one or the archfey, but there's, there's stats for a vampire lord. <laughs> Is there, there's probably stats you can out level right? a vampire lord. Yeah, you, exactly. you, can, that's the you thing. can kick his ass one on one, in theory. I think that's, I think that's really cool, because, especially because obviously how mm. D&D's kind of later on on the levels, it can still be really good, but most games are kind of geared towards that kind of like, you know, like one to ten. Yeah, yeah. Kind of bit. And this makes doing that much more attainable in like what how, so, how yeah. long most games will tend to run unless you're doing like a pretty you, know, you would you, you you don't have to like potentially get to 20th level to, 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 con- a... to contemplate trying to stop your patron you could be like yeah, okay yeah we're a party and i'm like level nine let's give it a go you get to do your, your story that's what you get to do story that's my top tip for D D is do the story do, 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 do the, the story, story. you gotta yeah, do the story about... we we on on the flip side as well to try and keep your... Again, because I think undead are more interesting, especially high-level ones. And most of the real strong undead tend to be intelligent and like ca- uh, charismatic and crafty as well, in a way that a great old one probably isn't. But they have they have desires and such of in a more understandable way. So you can, you can have your bad warlock patron who's making you go fight other bad guys. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're on the same side for as long... As they keep making you go kill other threats, other evil threats. Yeah, Spoonie has way. a video on that from back in the day. Ah, uh, okay. Of the 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 paladin who goes into Strahd's lair to kill him. Oh right. Yeah. Uh, or, or goes into Strahd's realm to kill him, and mm. Strahd goes like, "Yeah, I know you're coming here to do this, but I'm just going to tell you about a village of peasants nearby that are about to be attacked by these other evil guys." So. Yeah. Now that you know and you're good, you go, you have you to have to go deal with that. Yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. Strahd just tells them about bad things forever. <laughs> like, yeah, you could, if you if you fight me, you're gonna be too tired or too dead to deal with it, and you know, I, I could, I'll tell you how to get there. You exactly. Know, I, I'll I'll give you the power to deal. I'll with give it. you the power to deal with it. Hmm. <laughs> very it could be very dramatic. Or, um, in this could, case. You get bit by them. Ooh, that's true. Because kind of a kind of a uh, not 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 a a, a, for, a force warlock. <laughs> you've, you've accidentally become one. Mm. I guess that's true. Yeah, because vamp- vampire was a class in fourth, wasn't it? Yeah, there yeah, was. It a, was. Yeah. yeah, I think it was a race. Yeah, yes. it might have been a race because uh, there was like there was like leveled stuff for that anyway. But yeah, the um, the rules for being a vampire in fifth are very simple, mm. uh, and they're just your stats become that of a vampire. <laughs> And basically, it's like oh, okay. I mean, they're good. It's not super exciting, but this could be a cool thing to to kind of couple with that, I guess. Um, this is an undead one, so I'm going to talk about my Sunday campaign. No, that's that. fine. That's fine. I gave my rogue warlock levels. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because of undead things happening to them. Yeah, yeah. So like they became more entwined with the Raven Queen, so they kind of forcibly gained warlock stuff. Sure, yeah. And then eventually Warlock began they really like they really liked where it was going and then they started leveling into Warlock. Actually choosing it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then they That's picked cool. the Raven Queen patron in Alan Sarkana. So it's like it is something you can do. You can like lightly touch on giving them this. And then yeah. if they if the player bites or they were interested in it beforehand and maybe talk with them yeah, they'll they'll go down this on their own because they'll be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I want to do this stuff. Or I think stuff like that's what makes Warlock such like you know appealing mm. kind of class. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. Again, like I've never really felt the desire to necessarily play one, if only because I tend to want to do kind of creative weird stuff with what I'm doing anyway. But I can 100 percent see the appeal of, especially like a player who's not maybe they played like a fighter first time they played and then there's like the complete other end of the spectrum i think is warlock really uh with uh how much story is just built into the actual way the class works yeah, they were cool. assassin rogue before that oh no yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know you got them when the rogue is leveling up that instead of their sneak attack die yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's, fine. that's how you know you got them definitely yeah the, uh, the the kind of thought i've had for what this the thing i've drawn is is it's like a 
I feel like a mummy doll just wants to sit in its mummy tomb and be protected by its mummies forever, right? Yeah. I, 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 I can't imagine it scheming. So I'm imagining a sort of like a a, a pyramid guard uh, family who've been doing it for hundreds of generations or whatever. And you're, you know, th- this person's, I guess, the, the youngest or the, the, the current one. And maybe something got stolen from their ancestral tomb ah. of, their, of their great great ancestor or some sort and has to go and get it back potentially kind of like the um, grail guardians in last crusade yeah 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 and i think uh, also there's like the bad guy from a Yu-Gi-Oh arc yes uh, well yeah the um is that as well well there's uh, marrick yeah. marrick 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 ishtar yes um I'm Hide also, the millennium rod in my <laughs> buttons. The, the millennium rod. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a good voice, but yeah, the uh, I've also this is the I, I drew a, a it's a tabaxi that I've drawn. Ah. And though it's hard to tell because there's a I mean you can't see the face of it immediately, but that's uh, cool for Egypt. But it's cool for Egypt. I thought yeah. it'd be interesting. Uh, I also was thinking like, when am I ever going to draw a tabaxi? Not that I have any special dislike for them, but like, mm. it's a it's a weird one to fit in. I thought this could be cool. It's a good opportunity to have a, to do a tabaxi. Yeah, I like um, it. They like swear themselves to the mummy that sleeps, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little bit, you know, pulpy, and uh, it's it's not this. It's it's, but well, it's fun. Their quest to defeat their patron is their patron wakes up. You know, like that's the, that's the that's the other thing. Yeah, like it's it's all it's all fun and games. Then you hit twentieth level, and your patron's like, ah, finally, I my influence has grown to the point where I can dominate the earth. <laughs> the like, dark oh. side of magic is a pathway to many abilities because <laughs> it's just really unnatural. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I think. It, we talked about with the genie like how it's a great opportunity to talk with your patron in a way more and like have that ha- have more of a understandable interaction and I think this is that again but in a much more depending on the tone of the campaign but it means your DM gets to do a fun evil voice a lot more I mean you could have Skeletor if you want to have, go like full yeah. comedy oh man yeah Ske- oh, Skeletor is your patron and then you and then you play as, as <laughs> like <laughs> What would be the best, like, beast man? Yes, beast man. <laughs> like, a, like a furball. A bugbear. Mm. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Okay, I'm writing in now a lich with a bugbear <laughs> servant in my game. It's Skeletor and Beast yes. Man. On your seatbelt, beast man. A Sahagwin who's merman. And, oh. yeah. Yes. Perfect. Do it. And <laughs> Perfect. Okay, there's one more thing. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, there's one thing. We we, hang on, we we didn't we didn't really talk about the explosion. There's not much to say. I, will say. I mean, it's it's an explosion. They do an explosion. The damage is negative. funny. The the damage is not the point. The point is you come back, and I I I think that's cool. It makes so much sense for the you know the class. To, and you can to choose to do it as well. Which is good. You can choose to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the barbarian or a a barbarian gets like a revive on a con save or something. Oh yeah. The oh that's such a good ability. Yeah. Yeah, and you, so this is kind you make of a con a, check, and it goes up. The DC goes up by two every yeah, time. Yeah, each yeah. time. Yeah, when you hit zero. So, so this is this, this is like a, a thing a bit like that, and that's cool. So, and as a warlock, you're probably not going to be running it. Although, again, with invocations, you could be a full plate warlock with a great sword, and if you roll well on your health, then pretty decent health. Anyway, so yeah, mortal husk, cool. So now, fill, finish finish us off with a spirit projection. Well, your body is now simply a vessel for your spirit. Oh, thanks. Yeah. As an action, you can project your spirit from your body. Your body is left behind unconscious and in suspended animation. You can remain outside your body for an hour or until your concentration is broken. When your prediction ends, your spirit returns to your body, and your body magically teleports to where your spirit is. So it's like a smite ability. Yeah, it's yeah. really smite. Yeah, you chuck out a hologram. Uh, Leoric from um, Heroes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! You just like you, you run your skeleton over the wall, nice. and everyone's beating on your yep. body, and it's yep, like yep, yep. teleporting. You're like, ah, I'm fine. Your spirit and body gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. When you cast a spell of the Conjuration or Necromancy school, the spell doesn't require verbal, somatic, or material components that lack a gold cost. Oh, so that's not really anything. Um, yeah, you have a okay. flying speed equal to your walking speed and can hover. You can move through creatures and any objects with a difficult terrain. Mm-hmm. But you 1d10 force damage if you end inside a creature or object. Like a, like a, any of the ghosts. That's, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is cool, having, actually. Having it the same as that is fun. 
While you are using your form of dread, once during each of your turns you deal necrotic damage to a creature, you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt. So, um, regen, uh, lifesteal. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah, yeah. And that obviously synergizes with the, the touch where you replace damage with necrotic damage. So oh, cool. yeah, that could be some stacking nonsense, that could. Um, yeah. And once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, this is kind of like that 20th level paladin super mode, but you get that 14th level instead. Yeah, it's not bad, honestly. Like, just, like, move about and gain regen. Well, sure. not regen, like, damage regen and some resistance. It's also not resistance to non-magic bludgeoning, piercing, slashing. It's just all... Ooh, that's true. That's a fair point. All yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. Not that the monster manual really often specifies if creatures uh, do doesn't. magical or non-magic damage. <laughs> I think you're meant to assume it's not magic most of the time. But you are. Oh, shrug. Your body kind of... T- I, I think this works for the mummy one, because it's like the bandages fall away almost. Yeah, kind of yeah. Thing. Yeah. That could be fun. That could be cool. I, again, it's, it's, it's yet another thing to, like describe and uh, talk up that you can flavoured because if it's like bats uh, as in like oh, a vampire you could be yeah. like a, cl- a cloud of bats kind of thing yeah. or like the vampiric mist uh, which is a creature of course in one of the books what I like about this warlock over because th- there was like an undead warlock sort of before right in, in something somewhere uh, oh, shrug, maybe there was the raven queen one Right, yeah, but this one, this one I, I like that it's more generic going back to like you know a, a devil it's a devil is your is your patron. You you figure it out. And this one is very open ended, which I like. Yeah, it's um it's open ended in a good way, not a bad way. Yeah. Sure. Whereas like Fiend and Archfey are a bit too generic. Yeah, it's just like Fiend. Which we and because fiend, like, fiend, fiend equal fire and, is what fiend equal. Yeah, and like yeah. the fiends are pretty varied. Like there's a lot going on with fiends. So having it just be you, you fire man. Like I don't, I couldn't even tell you which fiends are fire fiends. Like the balor has <laughs> got fire stuff. This could be a good one for an orcus uh, guy instead of fiend as well. Like that's true. Yeah, you could go straight up for orcus. Yeah, because of course he is the the lord of undeath. That, that, that could be cool. He's got like a, a bunch of artifacts associated with him. You could quest mm. for those. And he could even give you pointers towards him, in, in theory. Yeah, it's not like I commune with my patron. It's like my patron cast sending on me, almost. Yeah, my, my patron's yeah. telling me to do stuff. It's, oh, God. He's you bugging me. You keep He's sending like, your patron. He keeps leaving me voicemails. <laughs> that's, the, that, that's another thing, yeah. Because a lot of them are like extra planar, and yeah. a lot of spells about communication don't work. But... Uh, you know, Strahd lives in a castle, right? I think he's in the Shadowfell, to be fair. But, like... A lot of these guys theoretically will just live in a big scary keep and like just go hey, 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 and with the skull head and you could just send them messages and ask questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that depends. Don't on waste the my time, maggot. <laughs> maggot, and then they do psychic damage to you over yeah. the phone. And you're like, oh, or you lose ow. a level for the next for oh, the next one. Lose a level for a day. <laughs> No. You could also do the storyline that of with this warlock that you were raised by them. Mm. Yeah, that could be cool. Um, and and then you as in raised as in raised from the dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. from childhood. <laughs> Not from childhood. And then it, again, like we talked to, we talked a little bit about the Revenant subrace mm. from that from that ancient Unearthed oh, Arcana, uh, the Gothic Heroes one. Uh, but you know that would be a, a, obviously a good pick uh, for for this. Perhaps you perhaps unnecessary. Um, because this does kind of have that you become undead, more undead over the time kind of thing. But if you really wanted to go, you know, that the root of I am the servant of an undead master, and I am a raised dead creature, that could be cool. Yeah, no one would no one would ask questions about why you're an undead if you work for <laughs> Skeletor as well. No, is, no, it's, it's not like oh, I'm a I'm a human mercenary undead. What? Excuse don't me? worry about it. D- don't worry don't, about it. Don't sweat it. It's fine. Look at this picture. Look at this. Look at this. He's a scary cat man. He is scary. Yeah. Can he got claws? So yeah, mummies like, alive vibe I'm getting from this. We have we, we talked about mummies a long time ago in a in a challenge raise episode. Uh, but we've not, not covered not the mummy lord. lord. No, just regular mummies. Mm-hmm. And uh, I do like I do like the mummy lord again. All my favorite monsters, I think, apart from the Hellfire Engine, which is my favorite monster. Now. I love the Hellfire but, Engine. The rest of them are the, like, you know, I, I really enjoy Death Knight, one of my faves. Mummy Lord's really up there. Um, D- Death Tyrant, I was su- surprisingly liked more than I would have thought, considering it was a Beholder, which I'm not that keen on usually. Mm-hmm. Again, like, if I were to play a Warlock tomorrow, I, w- I would probably pick this one, because 
it'd be interesting. And it's 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 fun, I think. Warlock, I feel like a lot of classes, it asks you questions about your character when you want to pick it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm playing a human fighter. Why? Yeah, you know, but what, I, okay. What else are you doing then? Yeah, I think if you when you when you make a warlock, you've made your character. When you make a fighter, you've made a a fighter, and then you also have to then make a character. Yeah, um, which is fine, uh, and I, I think uh, you can you can have a lot of fun making a, a very normal character, but. Uh, this, it's a system to make a, a complicated character I, like, uh, with the, the backstory and everything. And I want to say that most warlocks I've seen, they're very anime. They're very, very... Yeah. yeah. There's a certain kind of warlock out there, and, and sometimes... <laughs> again, you know, I think the genie really broke the mold uh, for that. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I, yeah, I, I think... Uh, I think they, they know the, the audience for Warlock, and that, that's reasonable. From my experience, the base Warlock class, is in just, just like spells, spell slotty stuff, yeah, is yeah. really underwhelming. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's, like, it's, a weak, it's a weak class. Really underwhelming. So these things have to sell you right. as being cool. I, 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 yeah, that is the appeal, isn't it? I guess it just has to be interesting enough to, to choose over something else that's cool yeah yeah definitely and honestly i don't like the spell list you get i sure. understand all the picks but yeah i yeah i mean i would consider you only ones. get a couple of them like why is greater invisibility in there <laughs> sure i get you uh particularly fourth level is like the level you get like blight yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, Blight would be a good one on a mummy warlock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. rot away. And then, like, uh, I was thinking, uh, like, a, a, what do you call it? Um, vampiric touch as being, like, a, a, a drain, like, dry them out. Oh, suck, yeah. Spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think suck, you get in, song suck. The old do mummy you, hug. Can yeah. you get inflict wounds? I don't think you get inflict wounds, do you, as a, as a warlock? Oh, inflict wounds would be a good one. That'd be a cool one. Anyway. Maybe a bit yeah, strong. We, yeah, it would be, it'd be really good. Yeah, <laughs> that would be the one good. that everyone would have. But uh, I think we, we like this guy, right? Yeah. yeah. We like this warlock. Definitely. I like this guy. Um, I, I think probably conceptually I liked the, uh, the the genie one more just because it was so different and very and like fun. And we had even talked about it like this should be a thing. Like that would mm-hmm. be cool. So, so that was like more surprising and fun. But this is like, yeah, this is good. And it, it's, it's one of those ones that like kind of should have been there all along, as it were. But I, I, I can see why it wasn't, because they kind of, again, started out with this loftier idea of your patrons, and ha- it's been kind of grounded more recently. So mm. it, it makes sense, it makes sense to have it. Yeah. Like I'm, a dragon one. I'm into them picking more generic things than specific ones. Like, I like yeah. now that you could be like, oh, this is the genie's warlock. This is the undead's warlock. This yeah. is the... Again, like, I think a dragon one would be really cool. Mm. I think... A monstrosity one, like you know, like or aberration. I guess the great old ones kind of is that, but like I, I think a beholder one would be so funny, and they could be really, really silly with the beholder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, you, you have, could have grow like, eye stalks or something. You can have eye stalks. You can have like random beams or whatever. Yeah. You know, like you know, it could be funny. You you've got two eyes, and they you can as an action like manifest a random eye stalk attack or something. Yeah, yeah. And there, there is that celestial warlock, isn't there, as well? In, in, I think it's in there is the celestial one, that's true. Like, warlock of celestials, and yeah. You just keep adding to it. Modron. Oh, oh no, you know what? No, no. I was thinking, I was actually thought of Marit, you know, the big robot, yeah. the big super robot. Having, like, me- a Mechanus patron and have it be Primus or something, that could be fun. No, anyway. uh, um, What about Raxavort and it's the Zvarts? And then we'll, let's make a Zvart. Mm, yeah. but, but there are Zvart warlocks. <laughs> They it's in are. the book. i got to tell you about my game at the moment because I've got to put Zvarts in. You oh. horrible, horrible bastard. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> this this is definitely unearthed fart. No, unearthed Arcana, not fart Karna. Sorry, I nearly made a mistake. You nearly said you nearly said the words that it was. Um, it is an unearthed Arcana. Yeah, we'll we'll be back uh, with the with the the bard in the coming days. Probably more likely coming week or week and a half or something to be quite frank. But that one's interesting. I would uh, for for that one, you can you guys at home are gonna have to do your reading because it's yeah, a we, long we one. can't set a whole table for. Like, we ain't gonna read the whole bard one word for word because it's a long one. 
Um, Maybe we'll see our favourite one. It's very cool. I will say it is cool. There's some good um, ones on that. It's such a good idea. Anyhow, uh, thanks for watching or listening or whatever you did. Subscribe, comment, like, hit the bell, ring the bell. Do why, do people say, why do people say hit that bell? Ding. Because you, you ring bells. You've got ring hit, bell. you, you hit it to ring it, don't you? I suppose you're right. Slap yeah. that bell button. Slap that slap the slap, bell. Slap the bell. Mm. Mm, doesn't I'm sound not, right. No. I'm not keen. If I was yeah. making YouTube, when you clicked on the bell, it would have like an animated gif of a bell ring and it would like play a ringing sound. I think if I was designing YouTube, <laughs> I'd make it like Dark Souls 1, where when you click the bell button, it rings for everybody on the same shard. So, <laughs> anytime someone subscribes to a channel, everyone's watching that channel gets the bell. <laughs> Jesus. That really got me. That would be so funny. That would be the absolute... Pits. It would be so bad and amazing. <laughs>